If you guys are lacking coins for all the new cards that are out, then check out MuleFactory.com. They're the cheapest site I've found for coins. They deliver in five minutes. And if you use TGC Kurt 5 at checkout, you get 5% off your order. Check them out with the link down below now. What's up, guys? Curtis here, and welcome to a brand new FIFA 17, FIFA 18 kind of video. Today, we're going to be looking at all the confirmed position changes for FIFA 18. These are things that have been released by EA in their, uh, like their official top 100. This is stuff that's been given to Foothead and Footwiz, and then stuff that was also at the capture event. So this is all confirmed stuff. These cards are the confirmed ones that are on Foothead, Footwiz, EA have announced, all that sort of stuff. So these are actual position changes that will be in FIFA 18. I'm not going to cheap out on these. I'm not going to do like 7 or 8 and split it up. We've got like a big, I think it's like 13, 14 players in this one. And we're going to do one big episode and just try and make it a good one. I haven't uploaded too much in the last couple of weeks. I've been kind of like taking a bit of downtime before FIFA 18. So I hope you guys appreciate that. But before we get into it with the first player, I do really quickly want to say it as well. I want to try and see how many subs we can get before the launch of FIFA 18. We're just hovering around the 250k mark. If we can smash away from it, that'd be absolutely amazing. So if it's your first time watching, don't forget, of course, to drop that subscribe and smash that like button too as well. So we're going to go into it with our first player, and that is going to be Nathan Ake. Now, if you guys don't know, Nathan Ake obviously uh, was at Bournemouth and at Chelsea technically. He was bought by Bournemouth permanently this summer. Now, these are his inform cards, the centre-backs, but this was his original card at the start of the game. It was this left-back right here. He's now going to have a, in fact, I'm going to move this over to make it a little bit easier. Uh, he's now going to have this centre-back card instead of that left-back card. He's got a slight pace downgrade. His defending's gone up a little bit. Everything else basically stayed the same. But I think as a centre-back, he should be really interesting. He's not the tallest, but as part of a back three or something next year, he could be a really fun centre-back for people to be using in the Premier League and will be dirt cheap because of his rating. Talking of players that have moved from left-back to Centre back, we're going to be looking at Cesar Aspilicueta. Now, I think he might actually end up getting moved in January uh, to a right back because I think he's going to be playing right. Well, with Zapacosta, who knows actually? When Zapacosta, before that transfer, Aspilicueta was going to be back on the right now. But I don't know what's going to be going on with the back line. Maybe he will be staying centrally. But um, for the majority of last season, obviously he played in centre back, but he didn't have a starting card. So his starting card was this left back card again. Another really good card. It had 79 pace and he's kept the 79 pace as well as getting the upgrade, his uh, dribble, uh, his defending sorry, has gone up too, his physical's gone up one, but obviously he's kept all his fantastic technical stats as well, so he's going to be a ridiculously good ball playing centre back, again, not the tallest at 5 foot 10, you're going to have a short back line, but they're going to be very, very quick and could make for some really interesting players in your defence next year. Next up we have this one, which is one that I, I thought was a little bit interesting, he's going to be a dirt cheap centre forward for people to be able to use on this year's version of the game. Now Bartles... He was a right mid last year. He's now got not only an upgrade, but a move to centre forward, and his stats are looking very, very decent. 86 pace, shooting's good, his dribbling is fantastic, and I think he's just going to make for a really interesting new centre forward striker in the Bundesliga. He's played on the left and right all of his years on FIFA. He was at, I think that's St. Pauli a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was FC St. Pauli. He's been in the second Bundesliga a lot of times, but he's really kicking off at Werder Bremen, playing up front, and that is going to be a really good chance cheap starter striker for people to use in the Bundesliga. Now this one's a little bit of a disappointing one. Not all of these are getting the moves for the best. This one is definitely uh, a negative one. Now Hakan Chalanoglu of course is a central attacking midfielder or was for Bayer Leverkusen. This is how he started off last year. But he's now been moved to a left mid. It's where he played most of his time uh, throughout towards the end of the season and it's where he's going to be playing for AC Milan. But not only does he move from centrally where that card would actually be acceptable, he also loses his pace by five. So he's going out on the wing where you need more pace usually and he's lost five of his pace. Now he's still kept his five star weak foot and his four star skills but the position change and the, the, the pace going down is just going to kill him. And you will never see this guy used at all unless he plays in the middle and gets a in form. The in form, if he gets an 81 in form, 82 in form, he's back to being fantastic again. He's playing in a cool league. He's got great weak foot. The best weak foot you could ask for. Fantastic skill moves. Really good long shots. That sort of player. 
But all the while this guy is a left midfielder, you will not see him used in FIFA 18. Next up, we have one of uh, a bit of a shock to me. I didn't think De La Feo would be getting an upgrade. And he's also then got this position change. Now, his position changed right for his transfer card at the end of the year. But this was the one he started off with. It was this right mid card. Now, he is going to be a 82 rated left winger. With four star skills, four star weak foot, 93 pace, 75 shot, 87 dribbling. He's actually going to be sick. He's going to be a cheap, very, very cheap option in the La Liga. And of course, he's going to be getting the strong links to all the Barcelona players. But he's also a good one. Like we've had players like Denis Suarez who are cheap options. But Delefeu is actually a sick one. And he's going to be cheap quite quickly into FIFA 18. So definitely going to be looking forward to that one. A really good card. Really good to link up some of the Barcelona players and should be very flipping exciting. Next up, we have Sadio Mane. Now, obviously, Mane last season was a right winger. That's where he played the majority of the season. But since Mohamed Salah has joined the club, he has moved over to the left-hand side. Now, he's very, very effective there. He can cut in. That's where he played a lot of his time for... Uh, Southampton of course but uh, yeah it's a, it's a bit more suited for him because he can cut in on his right foot and uh, finesse it put it in the bottom corner a bit easier for his finishing but a left wing card he's going to be excited 93 pace 85 dribbling not much has changed really in his stats shooting's gone up a touch that's about it really though despite the plus two upgrade I'm sure some of his in-game stats have changed quite a bit I think they've slightly changed the algorithm on how some of it has worked out I think that might be why a lot of the stats are a bit different this year but uh, left winger Really exciting and uh, definitely will be in a lot of BPL teams next season, especially if he's performing well and getting loads of informs again. Now, this is one we probably all knew was coming. That is Kylian Mbappe. Now, of course, he has moved from Monaco to PSG. He started off the game last year as a left winger. He got all of his special cards in striker. It was obvious he was going to be down as a striker on this year's version of the game. But not only has he got the position change, he's also got a sick little upgrade. He's up to 90 pace now, 80 shooting, 74 shot, 84 dribbling. And I'm just going to quickly check. He has four star skills and four star weak foot. So he is going to be one heck of of a striker. He's going to be fantastic. He's got every attribute you're going to want in your striker. He's 83 rated, so he's not going to be that expensive, hopefully. To start off with, he will be, but give it three, four weeks, you'd think he's relatively affordable to every player. Four-star skills, four-star weak foot, you could not ask for much more in your striker. And apparently, looking at some of his stats now, I'm curious to see them. 83 stamina, 74 strength is quite good. His finishing will be 87. So if you get him in the box, he will be putting it away without a doubt. Composure's 80, ball control's 87. He's going to be fantastic going forward and should be one of the most exciting players in the game next season. All right, next up we're going to go with one of my favourite players in the game last season. Now, Dries Mertens is just fantastic. He was a left winger at the start of the game and then Arcadius Milik got injured, so they moved Mertens into the middle. Well, now Arcadius Milik is back. Doesn't really matter. Mertens is still the first choice centre forward because of how fantastic he was. Now, uh, he is actually he has actually uh, not really changed too much in terms of his stats. He's moved from the left wing to centre forward. His shooting's gone up four, which is great. Dribbling up one, that is basically it in terms of the, the change in his stats. But the most important thing is that he's now a central player. Last year, if you wanted to use him centrally, you had to use one of his really expensive in-form cards, which moved him from the from the left wing to the centre forward. He's still keeping his four-star skills, four-star weak foot. He's still keeping his high-low work rates. He is going to be the perfect striker. He's not going to be cheap, but he's going to be very, very fun to use next season for sure. I'm buzzing for it, especially if he's getting in forms too. Literally, right, to put this into perspective, other than the the 90-rated Min Sun card, the 90-rated Mertens was the card I used the most on this year's FIFA. He was my favourite player. I think those two were the best strikers on the game, in my opinion. That's how much I rate this guy. Charlie Masonda is quite an interesting one. Now, it's, it's important to note that uh, he's basically moved from the, the left side to the right hand side. He's going to be staying at Chelsea thus far. He was obviously on loan last season, but uh, there's some really exciting stuff that, that makes this a little bit better for me. Now, it's, it's right there on your screen. It's five star skills, five star weak foot. Now, uh, having this guy at the game at the start is going to be perfect. A cheap right winger with unreal stats. He's got the best work rates you could ask for a right midfielder, the best weak foot, best skill moves, and 87 pace. Shooting and passing is not going to be amazing, but when you get the ball to this guy's feet, he is going to create some absolute magic. And being 76 rated, he's going to be dirt cheap very, very early on 
for this game. It's going to be really exciting to see how it unfolds. And uh, that, I'm sure he'll be getting a loan in January, maybe. I can't see him being part of Conte's plans. Who knows? But all I know is it's going to be exciting on FIFA at the start, nonetheless. Now, this one's a little bit of a different one. This is Lucas Podolski. Now, obviously, they moved him out wide in uh, recent years. He, he's, he's a striker, basically. That's what he wants to be doing. That's what he's going to be doing at Vissel Kobe. He was a right mid, though. He did get some special cards in the middle. He, he basically played out, out wide, uh, mainly for Galatasaray. But the reason why this one excites me a little bit, obviously, I'm a big Lucas Podolski fan. He, it's quite a big... Uh, position change form in my opinion basically he's not going to be the paciest you're probably not going to see him be used much because of Vissel Kobe but this guy is one of the most exciting finishers on the game I, I don't know what it is about him he just literally shoots rockets now I'm going to show you some of his uh, in-game stats if I can find them right now Okay, Foothead don't have his full in-game stats. But basically, to put this into some sort of perspective, this guy's going to have, like, 90 shot power. Like, he's going to be one of the most exciting finishers in the game from the get-go. Even though shooting's 84, it'll be, like, shot power, like, really exciting sides of the finishing. So I, I think he's going to be a fun player next year. We won't go over him for too long. We'll move on to the next one. Now, this one is a pretty big one. This is Rodrigo. Now, not only... As this guy had a position change back to the middle, obviously I'm sure if you remember a few years ago, he used to be a, a, a central striker. But he's had a massive pace increase. He has gone from 84 pace to 91 pace, which is absolutely fantastic. His shooting stayed about the same, his dribbling's about the same, but he's moved to a striker. So he's got this crazy pace upgrade. And been moved centrally. Normally it works the other way around. They take them from striker and then basically like bin them off and put them like with loads of pace out wide. Now to put this into perspective, he was a striker in FIFA 16, but he only had 84 pace. He was a striker in FIFA 15 with 86 pace. FIFA 14, he had 85. So he's always been like kind of middle 80s when he's been a striker every single time. So that's what makes this one so exciting. He's finally moved to the middle. And flipping heck, what a card this bloke's going to have. Four-star skill moves as well. Three-star weak foot. Left-footed. I always love a left-footed striker. I don't know why. It's just going to be brilliant. I'm really excited to use it. And I'm sure you guys are looking forward to it too. A good, cheap uh, La Liga striker. Going to be fun. Now, this is one that a lot of people probably saw happening after the purchase of Alexandre Lacazette. They've moved Alexis Sanchez back out wide. So, we only had him for half a season as a standard striker. But he's been upgraded again. He's up to an 89 but uh, he's basically returning to the left mid card that he uh, that he basically started last season with. It's a bit of a shame. It is fun to have him as a striker, but at the same time, it's also good to have him back as a winger as well. Uh, no, not really any changes to his stats, despite going up uh, another one. His, uh, his passing and dribbling have gone up one, and that is literally it. So not too much to talk about with Sanchez, so we won't stick around with it too long. And we'll get on to the final player of the episode. Now, this one isn't that big of a, of a final player. I probably should have saved a, a bigger position change for this last one, but but this is Jeremy Tollian. He's just signed for Dortmund. Now, he actually played left back last night for them in the Champions League. So I'm not too sure um, if he's actually going to stay as a right wing back for the full season. But that's what he's at now. It's good, though, because we're going to get a decent right back in the Bundesliga. We've kind of been struggling with some of the right backs. It's good to have someone with a good bit of pace. And he's German, so can get the strong links. A plus six pace upgrade as well as moving over should make for a really, really exciting player for next year's FIFA again. I know I've said a lot of these are exciting. That is why I picked them. I picked all of these players because I think they were the exciting position changes. That's probably why I've used the same adjective for every single one. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless. Let me know if there's any position changes you've spotted that you are looking forward to and which one of these players you're most looking forward to using for FIFA 18. Have a fantastic day, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if it is your first time watching. And I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.